In a very basic sense, formal language is contrasted to casual language, and it comes out with vocabulary and grammar choices. In a really obvious case of I'm going to go versus I'm gonna go, or want to versus wanna. In academic journals, you notice there's never the word can't or won't. It's always cannot or will not. And this is reflective of an overall trend that longer, more spelled out phrases are considered more formal than shortened and abbreviated phrases. I think that's generally true, but there is more to it than that, and I want to go over some of those aspects in today's lesson. I am from America, and so I'm speaking from kind of a Western point of view, which is the context of a lot of English. So that culture has probably influenced the way that we use the language. My argument is that in general, we are working towards becoming more casual as we get to know a person. It also has to do with power relationships. If someone is in a greater power, they are probably allowed to speak more directly, a little bit more casually, than the person who is in the lower position. An example might be that I can probably, as a teacher, speak more directly and a little bit more forcefully towards you as the student than you as the student should speak to your fellow students on the same level. So I want to go over a few different ways that we can explore these levels and the ways that language might change as we try to be more formal. Since this is the beginning of the course, I think it's appropriate for you to be speaking formally to me and your fellow students with the goal that at the end of the course you're going to speak more casual. The starting point for today's lesson is question four from the speaking test that we took. And by the end of the lesson, I'm going to ask you to redo that question as part of your homework. And how could you do it better? I'll give you a hint. Question one, uh, part one of question four is Tomoko is having trouble speaking because the microphone is not working and you need to tell her about it. This is an interesting case where if you speak for a long time, it's probably not so good. It's not actually polite. It may be formal to say, excuse me, but I'm afraid to say to you, Tomoko, it has come to my attention that the microphone you are using is not receiving into the audience's ears as well as it might. Therefore, I humbly ask you to turn up the volume. This is terrible and actually more rude than just saying, excuse me, Tomoko, could you please turn up the microphone? So, while it's generally good to speak longer, it's not always good, and I want to explore some of those cases with you as we go through the, the points of today's lesson. 